Well, hello there. This is Virtual Chess Noob learning and having fun with chess. Recently, while going through my YouTube playlists, I realized that I hadn't played the Max Lang Vienna Gambit for about a year. And you know, the reason for that is I've been playing Bishop C4 against the Max Lang defense. And partly that's because you potentially can get the full copycat variation and then the lovely Might Nemesis Gambit, which is actually one of my favorite lines in the Vienna. However, when you look at the Lee Chess Community database of low rated games of Blitz and Rapid, one of the best response, in fact, the best response against the Max Lang defense is the Max Lang Vienna Gambit, the immediate F4. So when I got this game, which I played using my Chestnut Pro, I decided to crack out F4. So let's have a look. So E4, E5, Knight C3, Vienna game, and then Max Lang defense, Knight F, uh, Knight C, uh, C6. And we can now play F4. This is the Max Lang Vienna Gambit. Now, technically, this is not as good as the Folk B variation, which is where they play Knight F6 first. However, it's still a really winning line. Now, potentially what you're hoping for is if Black decides to develop their other Knight, this basically transposes into the usual Vienna Gambit declined with Knight C6. Six, which is great for us because it's a straight up mistake. We take, they take, we've got d4 attacking the knight. Knight can go to one of two squares. Doesn't, doesn't really, whoops, doesn't really matter which one. Either way, we get e5 attacking the knight and black is in a world of trouble. So in this game, however, they played the appropriate move, which is the best move, which is also the most common move, which is to accept the gambit. Black should accept the gambit, it's minus 0 0.5. But as we will see, after developing other, the other knight, black is potentially in some trouble. Now here, Stockfish actually suggests that d4 is a completely fine alternative. Uh, and the evaluation is roughly the same. I don't recommend it because after d4, you're gonna have to face queen to h4 with check. Uh, pretty much you're gonna have to potentially bong cloud um, your king right away. It's really tricky and black has the initiative. So I recommend the knight. And the idea here is that after that, um, you know, the most common move by black is g5. The thing is, we've got full control of the center. We've moved their pawn to the side we, uh, and black actually has some trouble you know, taking advantage of their ostensible material advantage. In this game, Black decided to play d6 first, opening up that diagonal. And here we've got d4. We've got control of the center. We've got more development. Black now decides to play g5, defending that pawn against our bishop. And here we've got a very thematic move in the Max Lang Vienna Gambit, which is the immediate h4, asking the question, why is their pawn on, D, uh, on g5? If they take, that doesn't work, because we capture back, it doesn't matter if the queen is there because it's now defended by our rook. Most commonly, in fact, it's their best move, they're going to push g4. And you notice that potentially the kingside pawns are really, really advanced. Now, Stockfish reckons that knight retreating back to g1 is best, otherwise, you know, and we've got basically equality. However, I don't agree that that's the best, best move. You play this to push the knight to g5. And this potentially, this thematic move, is what we see in the Hamp Algaia Gambit. Basically, we're attacking the pawn on f7. Now, black may well find, as what they did in this game, that they've got h6 attacking the knight, and the knight appears to be trapped. It's technically trapped, but it doesn't matter. We were going to now sacrifice the knight, basically a gambit. We're going to sacrifice the knight and take f7. You see, excellent move, because we're going to get that back and we're going to have a fully open f-file. King has to capture back. 
king is a little bit stuck on that file, we're almost ready to castle. And basically with the king trapped on this side, with you know no real pawns defending in front of it, we're going to be in a really good position. Now technically black is ahead here, about minus one, but it doesn't matter. Here we take that pawn. Uh, and here, in this position, it's really interesting. The best move for black is either king to g7, what's that about? Or potentially rook to h7. These are completely inhuman, incomp uh, incomprehensible engine line moves. In fact, in this position, this occurs only about one percent of the time. And most sensible looking moves for black, like moving the, uh, the king here, the bishop here, bishop here, uh, and in this game they move their queen to f6, these are all mistakes and black is back ahead. In fact at high depth it's plus one for white. Plus one for white when black is plus two immaterial. That just goes to show how strong white's position is here. White is effectively position-wise plus three. So those two pawns don't matter. So we now have bishop out with check, winning tempo, king moves back, knight jumps forward, very thematic Vienna game move, knight to d5, attacking the queen, attacking the c7 square. What's black going to do? Their best move, in fact, is to trade queens and allowing this to occur. But it's hard to see. They play the second best move, which is actually already a mistake uh, in accuracy. Queen to g7, also defending the c7, uh, the c7 pawn. And now we're about plus 1.3. I now short castles, bringing the rook, controlling that fully open f file. Black is in some real trouble. They try to develop a, uh, try to develop their bishop. Now remember the king can't castle and that's a mistake because here we now uh, potentially could have just straight up taken, if that's what Stockfish recommends, they take back and we trade bishops. Now in the game I, I wasn't sort of, a, I didn't have the gumption to do that so I decided to be a little bit more solid maybe, play c3. You can see Stockfish wasn't afraid. They take I thought that's probably what they were going to do, and that's fine for me because I get to take back, win some tempo again. Their knight moves back, you can see they actually had to undevelop their knight to potentially not be as bad. Here it's plus 4.7, plus 5, where the opponent is plus 2 in material. This is such a problematic position for black. I'm fully developed, I control the center. Look at black's pieces. None of it's developed, all cramped. And now let's see what happens. I now move my, whoops, move my, let's get rid of that, move my queen, pinning the knight, the king, they've got no mo mobility. And here, after thinking, they'd move their king to d7. I think what they were thinking is there's a check, they want to potentially unpin the knight, control the c6 square but it doesn't work. It doesn't work, even with all that, because I still have check. They try to block a blunder, and in fact at high depth there's a mating net. A mate in 21 moves. Can you believe it? Basically I now have queen, queen forward with check, infiltrating, King basically now moves potentially to the wrong square, but you know there's a mating net anyway. Now there's a mate potentially in five moves. I now take. What is black going to do? They actually they calculated it out, realized there's multiple different types of checkmate. For example, let's say they decided to take. Uh, take, you know, uh, with one of these pieces. It basically doesn't work because I can take with this. Um, here they opted to resign. In fact, the way that they can, you know, make it last as long as possible is to give a spite check. So they, they could potentially give a spite check. I take and here, doesn't matter what move they do, I now capture 
with a discovered check. King can now move to f8, and now I take queen or rook here with a rook check, and now they only have one force move, knight to c8, blocking the check, and now I've got three checks. Two prosaic ones, that is mate, that is mate, you know, defended, and we also have this absolutely wonderful bishop captures a pawn on d6, double check, checkmate. Absolutely devastating, <laughs> good game, GG. The big takeaway from this game is to try the Vienna Gambit f4 against the Max Lang defense. It does require some learning, but it's stupendously fun and it's difficult for black to play against. I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.